Hello and welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to give a demo of Modo's new OmniHaul tools. But what is OmniHaul? Well, OmniHaul is an update to Modo's channel hauling tool. Channel hauling allows you to change the parameters of certain tools by clicking and dragging in the viewport. Previously, when using the channel hauling tool, you would need to select specific parameters that you wanted to haul and then enable the channel in the viewport but even then it was limited to certain tools and parameters. OmniHaul, however, gives you the ability to map these parameters to a mouse button and a gesture, so you can quickly and easily change the parameters by clicking and dragging in the viewport. As you can see, whenever you activate a tool, there is now a list of icons on the left-hand side of the parameter names. These icons correspond to how the parameters are mapped to your mouse. The mouse icon denotes which mouse button your parameter is mapped to, while the arrows denote which direction you need to move your mouse while holding down the appropriate button. For example, I have my hauling set up so that if I hold down my left mouse button and drag left or right, my cube will scale smaller or larger in the X and Z axes. But if I hold down the same mouse button and then move my mouse up and down, my cube will scale in the Y axes. You can change how each parameter is hauled by clicking on the icon with your left, right or middle mouse button and then moving your mouse side to side or up and down while holding down whichever mouse button you choose. You can also remove hauling assignments by left clicking the icon and clicking clear this hauling assignment or clear all hauling assignments. OmniHaul is also set up so that hauling inputs are consistent across all tools. For example, both the edge bevel and the edge chamfer tools allow us to increase the amount of segments or level of roundness when an offset is created. To keep hauling uniform across all tools, both the segment parameter and the round level parameter will be mapped by default so that if you hold down your right mouse button and drag side to side, the roundness or segment amount will increase or decrease, as both parameters produce a similar result. When hauling, you may also notice a heads-up display appear at the bottom of your viewport. This heads-up display shows your last hauled value and can be edited by clicking on the heads-up display or pressing enter. This allows you to add precise numerical values to haulable parameters without ever having to leave the viewport. Hauling assignments can also be seen by pressing the spacebar. This opens the mini properties window and from here you can change your mappings or view what mappings are applied to each parameter. Hauling is available in almost all the tools in Modo, allowing for a uniform workflow. So, now that we've had a tour of the UI and know how to set up OmniHaul, I'm going to give a quick demo as to how it's useful for modelling something like this joystick. The first thing that I'm going to do is create the base of our joystick. To do this, I'm going to create a cube. To create the cube, I'm going to activate the Cube Primitive tool in the Create tab and then click and drag in the viewport to the size that I want my cube to be. I'm also going to give it some depth so it goes from a 2D to a 3D shape. I'm then going to start hauling to get my box to the size, height and resolution that I want. Because I'm going to be using the radial to form later on to create a well for my joystick to sit in, as well as adding a bit of thickness, I'm going to haul so I have more segments in my X, Y and Z axes. I'm also going to round out the edges of this cube by holding down my middle mouse button and then dragging to the left to haul the radius parameter. I'm also going to hold down that same button and drag upwards to add more segments to that rounded edge as needed. Once I'm happy with the size and resolution of my cube, I'm going to press Q to drop the tool. The first thing that I'm going to do is use the radial tool to create a circle that will become the well for my boot and joystick to sit in. To do this, I'm going to enter the polygon select mode by pressing 3 on my keyboard, and then select a few polygons from the top of my cube, and then hold down shift and use the up arrow key on my keyboard to expand the selection. I'm going to go to the Deform tab and then activate the Radial tool and click inside the viewport. This creates a circle. With the tool still active, I'm going to use Hauling to resize the circle as I need. I can also use Hauling to change the rotation, weight and smoothing of my circle. Once I'm happy with how everything looks, I'm going to press Q to drop the tool. 
Now that I have a circle created, I want to add a bit of thickness to the top half of my box to break up the silhouette a bit and make the joystick look more interesting. To do this, I'm going to select the same group of polygons that I selected to create my circle, and then hold shift and press the up arrow key again until I have a selection that goes halfway down my box. Once I have all the faces that I want to be thickened selected, I'm going to go to the polygon tab and then activate the thicken tool. Using hauling, I'm going to add my desired thickness by holding down my left mouse button and dragging to the right. When I'm happy with how it looks, I'm going to drop the tool. To smooth out the silhouette, I'm going to select the hard edge that's been created and use the edge chamfer tool to bevel it. To do this, press 2 to enable edge selection, double click the edge that you want to chamfer and then select the chamfer tool from the edge tab. Using hauling, I'm going to change the strength of my offset by holding down my left mouse button and dragging right, and then increase the segment amount by holding down my right mouse button and then dragging up. Once I have my chamfer looking how I want it, I'm going to press Q to drop the tool. Now that I've added some thickness, I'm going to bevel the circle that I made earlier. Using the shift and arrow button trick, I'm going to select the circle and then press Shift V. This activates the bevel tool. First, I'm going to extrude inward slightly and create a safety edge loop. This means that if I ever need to smooth to a higher resolution, I won't have any weird pinching where my polys might be an odd shape. After extruding inwards, I'm going to hold down Shift and click anywhere in the viewport to reset the tool. With the tool reset, I'm now going to use hauling to pull the polys down and create a well. This is where the joystick will sit. Once it all looks good, I'm going to press Q and drop the tool. Now that I have a base, it's time to model the joystick. To create the joystick, I'm going to select the cylinder primitive in the Create tab. With this activated, I'm going to draw a cylinder by holding Ctrl while drag clicking in the viewport. This will create a perfectly round, uniform cylinder. Most joysticks tend to only have six sides, so using hauling, I'm going to hold down my right mouse button and drag to the left to change how many sides my cylinder has. Once I have the correct amount of sides, I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and drag up to change the height of the joystick, and then drag left and right to change the radius of it. Once the joystick is the right size, I'm going to reposition it so it sits in the well that I created earlier. Once the joystick has been positioned correctly, I'm going to press 2 on my keyboard to enter edge selection mode, and then select the top edge of my joystick so I can use the chamfer tool to soften it. After selecting the edge and activating the chamfer tool, I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and drag to the left to change my offset, and then hold down my right mouse button and drag to the right to change how many segments my chamfer has. Once chamfered, I'm also going to do a bit of additional detailing to the top of my joystick. I'm going to select the top face on my joystick and then press Shift B to activate the bevel tool. With the bevel tool activated, I'm going to haul so I can create a new additional edge loop. With the bevel tool still active, I'm going to use the blue handle to pull my new face down slightly and create a dip. Once it's looking how I want it, I'm going to press Q to drop the tool. The next stage of modelling our joystick is to create the rubber area that connects the joystick to the base. To do this, we'll be using mesh operations. Because the boot of the joystick is quite a complex shape, it's a lot quicker and easier to draw out the shape I want with a curve and then use a mesh op to duplicate it around the joystick. Mesh ops are a procedural way of modelling that allows you to create complex shapes and meshes while working non-destructively. This means it's easy for me to quickly make changes or edits to one part of my mesh without needing to worry about how it impacts my overall model. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new mesh item and then set up my workspace so that I can draw my curve. I want to make sure that my curve is flat when I draw it out so that when I apply a radial sweep to it I don't get any weird distortion. To make sure that my curve stays flat I'm going to be switching to the left camera. This can be done by pressing Ctrl and Spacebar at the same time and then selecting left from the pie menu. I'm also going to be enabling the wireframe view by changing my shading style from default to wireframe in the drop down menu to make it easier to see where I've drawn my curve. Once everything is set up, I'm going to select the curve tool from my polygon menu and begin drawing my curve. Looking at my reference image, I can see that my boot has three tiers as well as a circular area at the base of the joystick. 
I'm going to start drawing my curve so that it's intercepting the joystick and then create a corner so that I have the flat area that we see in the reference image. To create a sharp corner, place three points close to each other. Once that corner has been defined, I'm going to roughly block in the height of each of my ridges by clicking in the viewport whilst the curve tool is enabled. Once they're blocked in, I'm going to add a couple more points to each step so that I can define them better. You can add additional points to your curve by selecting a point adjacent to where you want your new point to be and then clicking on the curve to add a point. Points can also be moved by clicking on the point you want to move and then dragging it to where you need it to be. Once your curve looks how you want, press Q to drop the tool. Once the tool has been dropped, you can still edit your points by entering the vertex selection mode by pressing 1 and then selecting and editing the vertices that you want to move. Once everything is in the right place and looks good, I'm going to go back to the perspective view to make sure that everything's been positioned correctly and to open the mesh operations window. I'm also going to quickly switch my shading mode back to default so I can see the mesh that the radial sweep is going to create more clearly. The Mesh Operations window can be opened by pressing the Mesh Operations Viewport button above the viewport. Once the window is open, apply a Radial Sweep Mesh Op. As with every other tool, the Radial Sweep can also be adjusted by using Hauling. You can use Hauling to change the start and end points of the sweep, the resolution and the offset. Once I'm done messing about with my parameters, I'm going to press Q to drop the tool. Now that we have most of our model done, we can leave it as is, or we can add some fine details to take it to the next level. So, I want to add the detailing around the joystick that you can see in the reference image. To do this, I'm going to create another new mesh and click the cube primitive available in the Create tab. I don't want this cube to be uniform on all sides, so I'm going to draw out a small rectangle shape and then add some depth. The segment parameters from our base are still being used, but I don't need that higher resolution for this mesh, so I'm going to right click and drag left to decrease the amount of subdivisions in my X and Z axes, and then right click and drag up to decrease the subdivisions in my Y axes. I also don't need as many segments in my offset, so I'm going to hold down my middle mouse button and then drag down to decrease the segment amount. Now that I have my rectangle looking how I want, I'm going to drop my tool and then reposition it on the base of the joystick. When the rectangle is positioned where I want it to be, I'm going to select the mesh and then activate the radial array tool available under the duplicate tab. Just like the radial sweep mesh up, we can use hauling to adjust the start and end of our sweep, as well as how many times it's duplicated around the joystick. So once I've got the amount of rectangles that I want, I'm going to drop the tool by pressing Q. And the model is done! You can finish up here, but I want to quickly go ahead and show you guys how OmniHaul can also be used at the rendering stage to make setting up cameras and lighting easier. I've set up a quick render scene by creating a flat plane and then extruding the back edge and applying a chamfer to the new edge that was created. I've also assigned a few basic materials to my model. You can assign materials by clicking the mesh you want a material added to and then pressing M on your keyboard. To assign a material to your procedural model, select all the polygons in the item and create a material tag mesh op. Change the material name to something you'll remember, like boot. Once that's made, open the shader tab and create a new group. With your new group selected, create a new material by clicking Add Layer Material. With your texture group still selected, go to the Texture Layer tab in the Properties window and set the Polygon tag to whatever you named your material tag. I named mine Boot, so I'll be selecting Boot. From here, you can select the material you made within the group and change the colour. By default, Modo creates a camera in the scene so change your viewport settings from perspective to camera to look through it and position your camera where you want it to be. Once everything is positioned, open the render preview window. Here's where we'll be able to get a quick preview of how our model will look when rendered. 
looks nice out of the box, but I might want to mess about with my camera settings and add a shallow depth of field or background blurring to my render. With my camera selected in the items list, I'm going to check out the camera tab in the properties window to see what channels I can map to my mouse. I'm now going to haul in the viewport to change my focal distance, f-stop and blur length. I've also decided that I want to adjust my lights a bit, so I'm going to select the light in the items list and then use hauling to play about with the intensity and the spread size parameters. Once everything looks good to go in the preview window, hit F9 on your keyboard to open up the render panel and create a final render. As with all things modelling, don't be afraid to go back and tweak things until they look just right. For more information on OmniHaul, Modo or any of the tools that I've used in this video, check out learn.foundry.com forward slash Modo to take a look at more tutorials, the user guide and more learning content. This has been an introduction to OmniHaul in Modo 15.1. Thank you for watching. <laughs>